Hey folks, I just wanted to give you a quick rundown on what's going on for Lab 4. Um, usual two-week cycle, um, usual get it through Git. Uh, for this one, what we're going to be doing is using Lex and Yak, two tools to automate the production of um, things like uh, parsers, compilers, debuggers. So essentially, they read in a formal description of a language, a grammar for a language, and they use that and some additional C code you can supply to create a tool to validate and manipulate code, source code produced in a language of your choice. So essentially, you provide the grammar for the language and you provide descriptions of what you want done to code from this language and Lex and Yak build the tool to actually create it. So in the lectures we've uh, for today, the material is to go through um, descriptions of regular expressions that are used to describe individual tokens in the language. So the keywords, the symbols, the identifiers, you know, what make up the, what, what words and symbols make up the actual language that you're interested in. And then context-free grammar rules that allow you to describe the structure. What's the, the format for a while loop? What's the format for a function call? What's the format for a function definition? What's the format for a program description as a whole? So you get these kind of this set of context-free rules to describe how to compose things into valid pieces of the language, and then the regular expressions to describe what the individual tokens are that make that up. So um, I will get you to go through the lecture material for today on regular expressions and context-free grammars. And what I want to focus on is the use of Lex and Yak for automating some of this. So I'll just give you a bit of a rundown. Again, we've got two weeks for this, so we'll discuss this more in the lab next week. But what we're going to do is to make up our own little language here and then put rules in Lex to go through and describe the tokens, put rules in Yak to go through and describe the grammar for the language. And for lab four, we're just gonna get it to go through and validate programs written in this little makeup language that we create. So the language at the moment is a very simple one. Let me uh, just plow through. So right at this moment, the only things the program or, or that are valid in this little starter language of ours are programs that start with the keyword main, have the open and close curly brackets, and then a bunch of statements that are all of the form print, the keyword, and then some variable name and a semicolon. So just a whole bunch of print statements. And that's the grand total of what it can accept right now. And then the individual identifiers are essentially anything alphabetic, upper and lower case, any sequence of one or more alphabetic characters. So right now, that's what constitutes a, a valid program in our language. And what I've done in the lab for starter code is to create Lex and Yak files that will recognize programs in that form. So we'll take a look at the Lex and Yak in just a second. But the idea is we edit this lab 4lex that's got a description of the tokens and a lab 4yak that's got a description of the grammar rules. And then we just run make on lab four. And if you want to have a look inside the make file, you'll see what it does to go through and compile those Lex and Yak files and produce an executable. But it basically goes through and creates this lab four executable. And then you can run you know, lab four and feed it any source code. And it'll tell you yes or no, is that valid source code for our language? So again, we put the rules in the Lex and the Yak run make, it builds the, the kind of syntax checker, if you like, for our language, and then we can just check things out. So if I had my, my main code here in a, um, in a file someplace and I just ran lab four and fed that file in, it would say, yes, this is valid code. Uh, currently the way it's set up is it's pretty much white space independent. So, you know, I, a valid program would also be something like this where it was just you know all on one line. So 
You can throw in any amount of white space and whatnot you like. And what I want to do today is to just run quickly through what it looks like in these Lex and Yak files to actually um, to incorporate these rules to actually describe this language. And then we'll talk about kind of some of the extensions that you're going to need to make. So we've got a main routine that's got this open bracket, close bracket, and in between it's got a set of one or more statements, each one of which is a print, an identifier, and a semicolon. So that's essentially what we want to go through and describe in the Lex and Yak files. So in Lex, we'll identify that there's this keyword main that we've got to recognize, these two symbols, the open and close curly brackets that we've got to recognize, the semicolon symbol to recognize, the print keyword to recognize, and then these identifiers that are just you know sequences of alphabetic characters to recognize. So we'll have rules for the composition and rules for these individual tokens. And we'll just take a look at that. Um, so these individual tokens, the individual symbols and words, I'm going to describe as our main print, the open close brackets, the semicolon, so I'm going to give each of them a name. I'm going to call the main print, you know, L paren, R paren, semi, and then identifiers that I'll just call identifier. And again, they're just this sequence of alphabetic characters, one or more alphabetic characters. And then a program is composed of a main. A main routine is made up of the keyword main, a left parentheses, a block of statements, a right parentheses, this block of statements can either be one single statement or it can be a single statement followed by more. And a single statement right now is just the print token, the identifier token, and the semicolon token. And so the notation that I'll commonly use to refer to this is a program, this kind of abstract program unit, is just consists of a main at the moment. A main consists of this mix of tokens and a block of statements, again, this kind of abstract notion, a block of statements is just one statement, or a block of statements is one statement followed by more. And then an individual statement is a print keyword, an identifier, and a semicolon. So that's the kind of structure that we're trying to represent in our Lex and Yak. And again, pretty much these tokens are gonna to get represented in the Lex, and these rules are gonna get represented in the Yak. And what we're going to be doing for, uh, for lab four is I'm going to get you to introduce four new types of tokens uh, for real numbers, integers, subroutines that are going to look kind of like the main routine, but they can have a different name, and assignment statements where you basically say, you know, assign some value to a variable. So you'll have these four new token types. And then we'll tweak our grammar rules to say, okay, well, a program can be just a main or it can be a block of subroutines and a main. A block of subroutines can either be just one or it can be one followed by more. An individual subroutine will have a name, an identifier, a left parentheses, a bunch of statements, and a right parentheses. And of course, we've already identified, we already got rules for what an identifier, a left paren, uh, statements block, and a right paren represents. Um, our main routine is, again, same, same basic idea. Our statements, that's pretty much unchanged. Individual statements can now be a print statement, which is the one that we had before. So a print statement was a print identifier semi, or it can be an assignment statement or a subroutine call, where a subroutine call is just the name of the subroutine and a semicolon, and an assignment statement is just the identifier uh, the assignment token, uh, the value you want to assign, and then a semicolon. And then the value on the that we're assigning to a variable can be either another variable or a real number or an integer. So this is what you're going to be incorporating into your Lex and Yak as uh, the target for lab four. Now, all it's going to do is check that the structure is valid. It's not going to do anything like checking that the data types are actually correct. 
Um, it's not even going to check whether the variables have actually been declared. Well, I guess we don't have variable declarations, do we? It's not going to check that the subroutine has actually been declared. So you might have a subroutine call for a subroutine that you never declared, but that's okay. We're not worried about that for lab four. So this is the kind of structure that we want to get to so that now we could have programs that looked like, you know, some subroutine, um, another subroutine, our main routine, we could have subroutine calls in them, where again, it's just the name of the subroutine and a semicolon. So there's no parameters or return values. And, uh, and now we've got real numbers and integers as well as just our variables. So, and assignment statements. So this is where we're going. I want to just quickly take a look at uh, what the code looks like, and we'll dive into Lex and Yak more in the lecture on Wednesday. But if we have a look at the lab 4.lex, for instance, essentially the way th these things are set up is Lex and Yak are programs to go through and tokenize and, uh, and parse a program and apply a bunch of code rules you you've set up. They're essentially coded in C but with some extra syntax so we can describe our grammar rules. So the structure of these things, typically I throw in a few kind of starter sets of, if there's character sets that I want to use, I'll give the character set a name and kind of use regex notation for this. So I'm going to use alphabetic characters that are anything lower or uppercase A to Z. You might want to throw in another one for digits that's a zero to nine. It begins with a block of C code that describes the libraries that are in use. And so you're going to want the stdio and the y.tab.h. This is going to get created by Lex and Yak. Um, any external variables that we're going to incorporate, again, these come from the, the setup in Lex and Yak. So uh, these you'll pretty much leave the yys type and the yylval. Any functions that we want to create any global variables we want to create. So I'm going to keep track of whether or not there have been errors, and I'm going to keep track of the row and the column in the source code that we're reading through. So you've got a block of C code in this uh, kind of open and close percent brackets. And again, this is just regular old C code. Then we'll have, this is the part that's of interest for us. Then we'll have the set of rules that describe the tokens in the language. So a main routine, a print, you know, open and close parentheses, a semicolon, an identifier. And again, these are these can be either just straight strings if we've just got something, you know, it's this exact string, or it can be a regular expression. So a sequence of one or more alphabetic characters represents an identifier. So again, I'm giving each of these things names. And what's happening is when Lex goes through and tokenizes our code, it's going to look at any time it sees a main in the source code, it's going to say, ah, this thing's a main. Anytime it sees print, it's going to say it's a print. And it just applies these rules in order, returning the first one that applies. We can tell it to just kind of skip over any white space it, it sees. So we don't have a return type in here, so it doesn't actually return a token type. And also in here, I'm keeping track of what row and column we're on in the source code. So when it sees main, it's kind of read through four more characters. When it sees print, it's read through five more characters. So it's bumping up our column numbers as well. And when it sees a new line, it's saying, ah, I want to go to the next line, the next row, and I want to set my column on that row back to zero. So I've got those global variables where I'm keeping track of the row and column. And essentially, Lex just goes through looking for these sequences. If we see any kind of character that doesn't fit with what we've described above, and that's what the dot symbol is going to represent, it's just any other kind of character, it's going to generate an error message, and that's pretty much all of this is, we're creating a, a text string for an error message, and then we're calling this yy error routine to say, ah, it's broken, and it essentially stops the parsing process and says, no, you know, give, give the user this error message, we're done, and as a token type, it just returns whatever weird character it happened to stumble across. And then if you look at the very bottom, you'll see the YY wrap. This is just for kind of cleanup code that happens at the end of parsing. 
and the routine that actually displays the error message that we detected and keeps track of the fact that I've seen an error now. So this is essentially what's going on in the Lex file. What we're really interested in for Lab 4 is to tweak these to introduce new rules for the additional tokens that we've represented or that we want to add for the for the our new language. And then in the yak, we've got the rules for the grammar for the construction of different pieces of the language. So again, it begins with a C portion where we tell it, oh, you know, I want to use the, the functions and the global variables we set up in, in Lex. Um, I'm going to have kind of a topmost abstract unit called program. And so this percent start just says the, the topmost abstract unit is called program in this grammar that I'm going to describe. I'm going to gloss over the, the percent union for now. I'll talk about that more next week. And then we'll have a list of all the different types of token that we added in the Lex. So when you add new token types for Lab 4, you'll add them to this list as well as adding them in the Lex. And then for each of the program units that we've got, each of these abstract units, you know, we had program, we had statements, we had statement. So I'm going to list all of those. And again, when you go through and add kind of new abstract units for Lab 4, you'll add their names to this list as well. And then we simply give the grammar rules for each of them. So a program was made up of a main token, a left parenthesis, a block of statements, and a right parenthesis. Statements could be either a statement and more statements, or they could be just a single statement. A single statement was a print, an identifier, and a semicolon. So that's essentially the idea. We're just going through and augmenting this set of grammar rules. And then for the main routine as a whole, it, I'm just having it say, print out a message saying, you know, let's get started. This YY parse is automatically built for us by Yak, and it goes through and applies our Lex and Yak rules to the code to see if it's valid or not. And then if any errors were detected, it says parsing failed. Otherwise, it says parsing complete. So we get this message at the end that says yes or no, is the code valid? So that's kind of the idea that I want us to work on. And again, so I've got a couple of examples of valid and invalid programs that are in the repo. So there's a, a valid one. And if I happen to run my lab for, oops, I guess I better compile it. Uh, okay, uh, so we'll we'll try running our lab four from valid tests one and what did I call it here? Oh, just test one. And it says everything's OK. And if I do the same sort of thing with some of the invalid code that's supplied, it's going to say there's an error detected. So if we have a look at that invalid error one, you'll see that the error is it's actually missing the opening left parentheses. So there's the goal. We'll spend more time talking about Lex and Yak on Wednesday, and obviously more time on it in the lab next week but hopefully that'll get folks a chance to, uh, to get started with it. And in the next lab, lab five, we'll get into actually having this do more realistic things like checking if variables have been declared or not and checking if types match and all that kind of idea. But we'll leave it there for now. Um, have fun going through Lex and Yak and the grammar material and holler if you have questions.